action. Hey, Power Athlete Nation. Welcome to another episode of the premier podcast in strength conditioning, Power Athlete Radio. I'm joined by Mr. Tex McQuilkin. Hi, John. How are you? Good. I'm John Wellborn, CEO of Power Athlete, and we are here to answer some questions. We have a special segment of Power Athlete Radio where we take callers' questions on our hotline and we answer them here for you, the listener. Um, a lot of times when you're following Power Athlete programs, and if you're interested in those programs, powerathletehq.com forward slash training. training. You can check them all out and you see the battery of uh, programs we have available. But when you're in there and you're following the program, what do you know to do? Well, you can reach out on the feeds. You can shoot us an email. There's social media. There's a million ways to reach out. One of them is via our hotline, which mm-hmm. can be found at 929-464-464-0. 929-ing-ing-0. Zero. Yeah. So what's amazing is we wake up and there's dozens of calls and we get to comb through them and figure out which ones we're going to answer. And I think we have one queued up right now. We do. Let's let's rock and roll. Let's okay. do it. Okay. All right. I'm excited. Hey, dudes. Uh, two questions for you. I've been on Jack Street a long time. And I probably missed this because you probably covered it somewhere else. But why do we not sprint on Jack Street like you do in Field Strong and the other programs? And then two, uh, I've done a leaning protocol for most of COVID lockdown in L.A. and got lean. And uh, I want to get off of it. So what do I do for maintenance now at this point? And that's all. Thank you. Two parter, let's begin with sprinting, Jack Street, and what's going on there, John? Uh, sprinting is extremely neurologically, physiologically demanding. And I don't feel comfortable programming sprint work, especially the type of sprint work we're looking for. If you just want to go do some jogs or some easy runs, that's on you. But when I think of sprint work, I'm thinking of like max effort, your ability to be able to generate force, drive, put your foot in the ground and go vertical. Mm-hmm. Uh, that takes a certain amount of prep work. We have to build an aerobic base. We have to get you ready to sprint. And there's a whole periodization block that we use in Field Strong and Hammer and some of the other programs to get you to the point where you feel comfortable sprinting. And then once you do it, we have to be able to, you know, adjust your volume and intensity and make sure that we're consistent in it. So just randomly dropping sprinting into a training program doesn't necessarily pay dividends uh, without prepping it ahead of time. And, uh, and unfortunately, with the time constraints we have, most people don't have two or three hours to train each day. So what are we looking to hit? If you're following Jack Street, you're doing a very dedicated hypertrophy program. If you want to do something more athletic, like a field strong, there's going to be sprinting movement, change Mm -hmm. of direction, and that athletically based program. If you need to run far or you need a running template that allows you to push it a little bit more, we have hammer. So each of these programs is is divided into a different archetype. And unfortunately, like we can't just make one program. There's no way for me to give you everything in a single program. So for me to actually add sprinting to Jack street, I have to pull something out and pulling that out makes it less Jack streety and makes it more similar to other programs. So if you're interested in sprinting and you want to do it and you just want to throw some runs in, have at it, take a Wednesday, take a Saturday, go run some Hills, push some sleds, do some things. Uh, the problem though, is if you're going to go out and think, Hey, I'm going to do five or 10 max effort sprints and I haven't sprinted in years, but and I've been on Jack street. I think you have to look out. You're going to look out for a horizon change yes. and potentially pulling a hamstring and having some issues. Sprinting, like we said earlier, is extremely physiologically demanding. And Probably the single greatest expression of speed, uh, power and strength is sprinting, but there's a certain neuro component. Right. I mean, for, for years we saw people who were like, oh, all you need to do is get stronger to sprint. That's not the case. No. And what I want to take just a moment to, this is very difficult for people to grasp that have never been, that have never been fast. So there's a difference between sprinting and running fast. A lot of people that are following the program or played old high school ball that now still do some rec league or still train relatively hard, they're most likely running fast. But how we're programming and piecing sprinting training into field strong, into bedrock, and applied in one of the intensity sprint days during the hammer, as well as our fully dedicated sprint skill pro training program, speed kills, that is sprinting <laughs> yeah. versus just, 
hey, running fast, which is fine. Yeah. Applaud. If, if you just want to run fast on in, in Jack Street, go out and do a couple hill sprints. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever sprinted uphill poorly. And there's also it's very hard to change horizons and you know pull hamstrings running uphill. But unfortunately, there is a certain amount of prep work and we do it, you know, not only with building aerobic base, but A skips, B skips and all the sprint progressions that we work on being able to kind of load distances and vary between them. All of that takes a certain amount of time. Like I got an email yesterday from a guy who had been following the hammer program for his uh, admission into the FBI. Nice. And um, I forwarded you the email. Uh It got forwarded me from Raven and uh, it was great. He like crushed everything. Uh, The program hit the mark he had done everything from soft lead to mountain athlete and every program that's got a lead in it. And, you know, hands said, hands down, hammer is the best offering and power athlete offers the best programs and he'd done them all. And, um, you know, really wrote a really glowing review of it. And, you know, now didn't necessarily execute what he wanted to do in terms of joining the FBI. And now is coming back to do some Jack street had, you know, had done field strong, had done hammer, done a little Johnny Watt at one point and now wants to try Jack street. So it's pretty amazing when we have somebody follow us for four or five years, use the different programs, was in the military, decided to go to the FBI, change programs, change focus. And now his focus is changing again. And I think that's just having the right programs to, for the right archetype. So if you want to throw some sprinting into Jack street, by all means, go out and run some hill sprints, be smart. But at the end of the day, if you really want to learn to sprint, it would behoove you to follow a program that actually focused on preparing you to sprint and to do it well. And if you're enjoying Jack Street, so we have some options for you. If you're enjoying Jack Street, I encourage you to tack on speed kills, but hit speed kills in the AM or solo because this is very skill based heavy. A skips, B skips, as John mentioned, and then Jack Street's later in the afternoon. Option two that we would present is following one of the programs that has sprinting each week, Hammer, Field Strong, Bedrock, and then... On tack- occasion, a little Johnny Watt gets a little sprint work. I haven't thrown a ton I of sprint work. I think they're running fast. Is that like where your KB swing pull up and, and yeah, recover I mean, for 200 meters? It's usually <laughs> the sprints are usually in the mix, in like mix some mix modal deal. Where, hey, you're going to do pull-ups, you're going to do sprints, you're going to do swings, you're going to sprint. I mean, it's it's usually mixed up with something in there. Uh, we haven't gone in and done a dedicated sprint template in oh, bring, Johnny Wad since it was CrossFit football. Can you bring back the gassers? Well, you did that with the top 100, right? Oh, I still throw the gassers in there. I mean, I don't necessarily view gassers as sprinting. Do you still have to though. describe what a gasser is? Yeah. Well, the problem I'm not is... not mad at it. <laughs> well, we had a lot of people who weren't familiar with American football. So we had yeah. people in India and Dubai and Australia and New Zealand and, you know, Abu Dhabi and, and South Africa who were, you know, rugby, you know, rugby league, rugby union, you know, footy guys. And uh, they didn't know what a gasser was. And more importantly, they didn't know what 53 yards was because they don't have a yard in the metric system. Get on a level. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So uh, just kind of a funny American football reference with gassers. And uh, but at the end of the day, a gasser is not sprinting. Oh, I mean, you're going to, it's also not change of direction for the record. Well, but, but that idea of running a gasser, that's conditioning. Uh There's a differentiation just because you're conditioning doesn't mean you're sprinting. To me, sprinting means moving as fast as you can with max acceleration. The old Charlie fans, Charlie Francis, you know, faster than 92% of your fastest time. And if you're not running fast, then you're just wasting time or you're doing conditioning or you're doing some form of tempo runs. But sprinting, I believe is one of the greatest displays of athleticism and also strength and power. And it it has to be taught. It just can't be randomly done on occasion. No. Otherwise you will, the patterning will default. You will fatigue and patterning, losing your pattern. That's when injuries happen happen, where John referred to changing your horizon. Imagine I'm staring down the hundred meter track and I'm just staring at the finish line. And then as the head goes back. All of a sudden I get fatigued or I try too hard. My effort steps in. And you start reaching. Lifting that chin. Well, it usually comes with the fatigue and low back. So as okay. the low back gets fatigued, all of a sudden you stand upright. And then to compensate for it, you start reaching with your feet. Mm-hmm. And you're reaching with your toe. And then the head goes back. And as soon as I see you stand up and the head goes back and I see you reach, I know within the next two you're going to pull a hamstring. Yeah. I often when coaching, I look for the over effort and that starts in that hands. Like you get the fist, like I'm punching the air 
and it travels up into the arms and you lose the arm mechanics, the, the legs start to fall apart. You got to look, you, you got to hold your hands like you're holding baby bird eggs. Uh-huh. And which is funny because aren't that's a joke. Bird eggs, baby birds yeah. in the egg? Yeah. My old high school track coach was saltine, saltine cracker. Uh, so I brought that to the, the seminar to pair with the baby bird eggs. I, the, I think the baby bird eggs was actually Raphael. Uh, I believe it 100%. Yeah. And I, and I always remember it was years later. I'm like, wouldn't all the baby or the, the bird eggs be babies? He's like, yeah. that's, that's the He's joke. Like, <laughs> the, Stop the, getting so literal, you rhetorician. The final. Oh, that's right. You're a rhetorician. I'm, I'm a modern the, rhetorician. The final note, as I was mentioning earlier, it is hitting the one of these programs that involves sprinting uh, and then tacking on a Jack, Jack Street-esque Johnny Bod. Mm-hmm. So you're hitting with the, the bodybuilding that you enjoy along with fill, filling out the rest of your program with a, a, a sprinting choice in there. There's an age old saying. Um, the person that tries to sit on every seat sits on no seats. So I think a lot of times with these programs, uh, people are looking for a program that does a little of everything. Mm. And the problem is, is when you try to do everything, you really do nothing. So yeah. that's why with the cycles and the way the programs are designed to archetype, they're very pinpointed for that individual. And, uh, we've spent years identifying these individuals. We've done surveys. We've listened to you guys. It's a lot easier for me to sell something that, you are looking for. I would rather design you a program than me create a program and sell it to you because then you have to find a fit. We listen to our consumers and we listen to our athletes and we had, so here's another interesting one. We started doing online programming in 2009 with CrossFit football. Gave that free program away for years. It wasn't until 2015 we started following, uh, doing Field Strong. Well, no, Field Strong was 14, John. 2014, we started selling Field Strong. And that was super interesting. I mean, we had people behind this ghetto WordPress paywall deal and we're, you know, loading programs directly to the blog. It was really clunky. And from that, we started, you know, we would get emails. Hey, I I really enjoyed Field Strong, but is there a program that does X? And then we got another one. Hey, um, you know, we, you know, I finished up the linear progression on Bedrock. Now, where do I go? So is it something like Field Strong, something like Jack Street? And then we need a grindstone. And then as those kind of took off, all of a sudden our relationship with CrossFit ended and we needed something to do with CrossFit football. And so I created the whole persona of Johnny Wad just to try to give a little tongue in cheek humor and to keep that CrossFit football. I think it's always been there, John. It has. Well, I mean, uh, the CrossFit football name should have always been Johnny Wad from day one. Mobility Wad, Johnny Wad. It would have been perfect. Um, Fortunately, I didn't have that level of sense of humor when we did it way back, way back. So. I regret that. But uh, what's amazing is the amount of people that are still following power athlete programs that pay homage and more importantly, give us a heads up like, hey, I started following across the football. Power athlete has always been my information resource for training and for the best on the Internet. So and the the evolution of the individual, I'll, I'll give our nod to Coach Carl Case, one of the OG cross football seminar attendees yeah. and eventual seminar staff. He just had his first child probably about a year ago, but he has since switched from he's went through bedrock experience, field strong, full on. And now cross he's in football and cross football. Now he's in the the grindstone the of his grindstone life. of his life. No so shout out to Carl and his he's got a blog coming out for us to share his experience. Awesome. I love it. As you guys know, uh, when I was single before I got married and had kids, like people would show me baby pictures and I'd be like, eh, like because I really wasn't into it. And now that I've had kids, um, whenever people have kids, I'm always like, send me a baby picture. I want to see the baby. And I, I just, for something, it just makes me happy to see that like in, 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 in the face of all this craziness and everything that's happening in the world, that people are still banging weights, having kids, living their lives, growing their families and being the best versions of themselves. And I think, uh, you know, the greatest effect that you can have is on those around you and, you know having kids and being able to raise them, especially within the power athlete model, I think is just giving them a hell of an opportunity. I'm excited to see where it goes. As am I. And for the second part of this question, John, we had our gentleman here has been, I don't think he left his name, area code 213. I'll look it up. After Two, this. 213 is in LA. Uh, that's LA. Area okay. code. So the old school LA is 213. The new school or the South Bay was 310. So when I grew up, I, we were a 213 area code, and then they moved the South Bay to 310. So 213 is LA. 
All right. Do you remember the time where there were no area codes? Or no. did LA always have it because it was huge? Yeah, we always we, we were always 213. Ah, because right. Houston, we had, I re- recall, no area code. I guess they expanded and now there's three area codes for them. Yeah, list. we were 213 and then we went to the 310. And then Orange County was always 714. And then uh, that became like inner Orange County. And then towards the water was 914 or 949. Was there any profiling due to area codes? Mm, yeah, there was a little bit. Like if I still see somebody with the OG 714, I know they're from like Orange and kind of in that direction. If they're a 949, that means they're from the beach. Ah, yeah, we had a little bit of that. But the second half of this question, dude's been on leaning protocol. Good call. All COVID. And he's looking, I guess, to maintain versus continue to to lean to lean uh the easiest thing to do is just figure out what your total calories are so the easiest way to do that is just kind of figure out over the course of maybe five days just kind of set that caloric load somewhere between 10 and 14 calories per pound of body weight and look at the scale if the weight is constant then that's probably a pretty good number if you're gaining weight cut it back and you're going to have to fine tune somewhere i would definitely recommend more than 10 but somewhere between that 12 and 14 calories is usually where it's going to be. But at the end of the day, put yourself on the scale, see if you're gaining weight, see if you're losing weight and adjust accordingly, and then balance your macros. So one pound of protein or one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And from there, I want you to take that number and subtract it. And then what's left on that number, split it in half, and then just go with carbs equal and fat equal on those two numbers. So make sure you're getting at least a gram of protein per pound of body weight as you're starting. Times that number by four. Subtract that from the total caloric load. Take that number. Split it in half. Carbs. Fats. And then just eat four meals a day, three meals a day, whatever you need to hit your calories. And, you know, continue to weigh yourself probably once every four to five days just to make sure that the number is correct. If you're gaining weight, you can add a little bit more calories. And if you're and if you're gaining or losing weight, then you might or sorry, if you're losing weight, you want to gain some calories. If you're gaining weight, you might want to subtract some calories and just kind of figure out what your maintenance dose is. Is there a difference between adding on the fat side or the carb side? Because protein's constant. Uh depends on how much he's wadding or well, adding sprinting into his program? No, it really comes down to taste. So okay. as long as the protein is constant at one gram per pound of body weight, the other part is just kind of taste. So okay. certain people tend to have a, you know, more taste for carbs, other people, a little more taste for fat. Um, you know, obviously the exchange on, on fat, one gram of fat's nine calories, uh, you know, one, uh, gram of carbohydrates worth four. So you can actually eat double the carbs. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we, we just had Paul Carter's podcast launch and he's a guy that, that runs real low fat and does a lot better on higher carbs. I tend to think we're pretty decent on more of a balanced deal, but I'm also not ingesting a ton of extra fat. Like if I'm eating, you know, red meat, I don't have to supplement. If I'm eating chicken, I'm going to definitely have to put some olive oil on that. But Mm -hmm. we also have a podcast where the guy's talking about the benefit effects of drinking olive oil. So that's an important one. Uh, Yes, we do. So realistically, if you're in that maintenance phase, the idea is just to be able to maintain your body weight, get yourself onto a normal, non-crazy style of eating and just continue to train and maintain that weight. And just for note, we have a reverse side of that question on episode 462 a couple weeks back in which an individual hit his bulking goal and then was like, now what? Now it's time to maintain. So coming at that same question from two different sides, and that's the beauty of Power Athlete Radio, an individualized answer for all of you. And if you need help with nutrition, reach out. We have a nutrition tab on PowerAthleteHQ.com. We have a whole team of nutrition ninjas that will answer your questions, book some consults, get you where you need to go. You're not in the nutrition alone. We do as good a job on the nutrition as we do on the training. Unfortunately, we're not known for our nutrition as well as we are our training, but I think our skills are as good as anybody out there, if not better. But when it comes to training programs, I think we offer best in the class, best in the world, best in the game training programs. And there is something for everybody. And if there's not, You can reach out and we can do custom stuff with remote programming. I got Mm -hmm. two or three custom programs that I do a month and people want something that's not completely off the shelf. People want something a little custom and we're always happy to accommodate. Yes. Closing out for our caller. I say stay on your Jack Street train, hit up speed kills and actually learn how to run before you get out there and do something that will take you off the street. Uh, Yeah. Stay on the sniper. Yeah. Stay on the street as long as you can. So. All right, Tex, I think we slayed it. Aston it, slayed it. Slayed it. The 12th principle. Slay all day. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Power Athlete Radio. And I'm John, and this is Tex. Tex. 
and we are here at the hotline if you need us. So, and we we need one thing from you, listeners. Oh, a yeah. review. We do need reviews. iTunes reviews. If you like what you heard, I I'm sorry we waited to the end to ask for this, but if you made it this far, you must like us. Well, uh, here's the deal with the reviews. If you go on right now and you smash a review, we will read it on the air. Okay. So, guaranteed? Yeah, guaranteed. We'll do an entire podcast of just reading the reviews on the air <laughs> if you guys leave them. So only leave them if they're a five star and you got something witty and fun to say. If it's uh Are you saying that we'll give a t-shirt away to the best, most clever yes. review? Hands down. We have a whole bunch of new merch launching. We will give a t-shirt. We will send it out on our dime it's for the best, most creative review left for Power Athlete Radio with a five star. That's exciting. Yeah, let's do it. You you heard it here for you heard it here first, folks. You can print it and you can take that one to the bank. All right, shut it down. Yeah, let's go. Good. Home. Thank you, Power Athlete Radio. Now it's time for you to empower your performance. Head to powerathletehq.com backslash training to choose from a number of programs to meet your specific performance goals. And if you like to break a mental sweat too, visit academy.powerathletehq.com and become a real stakeholder in you or your athlete's success. Until next time, bye!